It's that time of year when things are getting a little bit colder. It's raining and I'm in my favourite kitchen of all. This is my mobile pub, as you do. I'm going to show you how to make a delicious sausage and squash chilli con carne. Really simple to make, luscious to eat. The kids love it. You can do a big old batch of it as well. And it's perfect for when the weather starts closing in and it's getting colder. Great for things like bonfire night, parties. It's going to be a beautiful thing. I've got the oven on. Uh, I've got a pan on here, a nice little casserole pan. So first up, get a nice squash. Now, the skin actually is very delicious, but what I love about peeling it is it kind of allows the squash to soak up all those beautiful flavours. So once you've peeled it, just take the end off the squash. Remember the squash is round, so obviously be careful when you're cutting it. And when it comes into slicing it like that, just like keep your hands out of the way and just gently angle it down like that. Don't put your weight on too much. Nothing kind of erratic. Then we've got these little seeds here. So I'm gonna grab a little spoon and we can remove these seeds. Now these seeds you can save, you can dry, and you can plant out next year to grow more pumpkin, which is very, very cool. So I'm using a butternut squash. You can use any squash or dense pumpkin that you like. Just slice it into little kind of, sort of one and a half, two centimeter chunks. So I've got the butternut squash done, then it's the sausages, look at that. 400 grams of beautiful sausages. Now what I wanna do is just add a little bit of oil and I wanna fry off these sausages. I wanna pull them out into little meatballs. Gonna get the sausage like that, pinch it with your hand like that and it comes out like a rustic little ball. Very, very simple, straight in like that. The better the sausages, the better this dish will be. As Soon as we got a little bit of color happening here, what we can do, is add some nice fragrant things, right? We wanna get some spice happening. So half a little cinnamon stick like this, just snap it. That'll go in, that'll start toasting up and all that frying fat. Uh, I'll season generously with black pepper, which I like. Then I'm gonna use two little spice hacks here. One is smoked paprika. The smoked paprika gives you that beautiful smoky flavor like it's been cooked over a fire. Then I'm using a little Cajun spice. Now, these little kind of Cajun spices, jerk spices, rasa al hanu, curry powders, these are quite genius, right? Because they're little blends. So there's about like eight or 10 spices in here. Oreganos, all the peppers, you know, garlic and onion powder. So I'm gonna put two of these heaped teaspoons in. It's just delicious. It's gonna give it a real length, a really nice savory spice that I absolutely love. Just toast that onto those lovely sausage meatballs. Look at that, that's properly rustic. And then I'm gonna just highlight a little product that, that I kind of rate. You can use onion, carrot, and celery. So the Italians will call that a soffritto. And this is a frozen product. So if you go to the supermarket, you get bags of frozen carrot, celery, onions. It's just a nice little hack. I really like supporting the frozen veg. I think it's genius. It's brilliant for like just taking handfuls, two handfuls, not wasting stuff. I think for busy people that want to cook lovely food, these little cheats are amazing. You know, it's not just about frozen peas. I want to use like two or three cloves of garlic. That's how you're going to get that really deep, comforting flavor. Nice little trick actually, using balsamic vinegar, a couple of tablespoons, right? If you think about the sweetness in the veg that we're dragging out, this will give it a nice little kind of tang and it will give it the most delicious depth of flavor and a gorgeous color. Look at that. What I love about this dish is it's a family favorite. Everyone loves it. Like you're using sausages, cheapest chips, you know, go for the best ones you can get. We're getting loads and loads of veggies into this dish. And also it's like an amazing excuse to get more beans in, right? Because we expect to have beans in a chili con carne. So any beans you like, white, white beans, cannellini beans, velotti beans, butter beans, black eyed peas, kidney beans, even chickpeas. So I'm gonna use a little bit of rosemary in here. Rosemary's a great herb, really good with butternut squash, sausage. It's a lovely savory herb, so easy to grow. So just a couple of sprigs, just finely chop that. What I love about making casseroles, chili con carnes like this, is it's got a really nice flow. You add the sausage, you add the spices, you add the garlic and the veg, you know, it just gets more and more interesting as time goes on. Look at the colors, the orange and the green and all the kind of gnarly bits of sausage. Absolutely beautiful. Now we go in with the wet stuff in the form 
of lovely tin tomatoes and some lovely kidney beans. Use any beans you want. I'm using kidney and black beans. Go in juice and all. That little liquid is perfect for creating an amazing sauce. Then some lovely tomatoes. Gonna make it sweet and delicious. And look, if you wanted to do a veggie version of this or a vegan version of this, that's fine. Just pull out the meat. And I would sort of suggest using some fresh and dried mushrooms to get that umami, that depth of flavor. Just let it come to the boil. Give it a little season with salt and then pop it into the oven. Now, what's nice about popping it in the oven is it will continue to simmer and cook, so essentially stew, but from the top it's gonna to bake or roast. So we call that braising, right? That means you're gonna get color on here. You're gonna get reduction of liquid, but concentration of flavor. It's gonna be amazing. So I'm very happy with that. Let's get that in the oven now. Normal oven, 180 degrees Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit, and then I'll show you what to do next. While that's cooking, please click the like button and give us some love, and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and remember to turn on that notification bell so you know what's happening. Now, back to the recipe. So it's had an hour and a half, and it's just been blipping away. Have a little look at that. I mean, it's a real picture. So you can see how it's reduced down. Oh, it looks so comforting. So I want to give you a little tip on extra deliciousness, okay? Um, it's a good one. Potato masher. So if you just go to one little side of the pan, just mash one side, All right? So what's that doing? This is breaking up some of the sausage, some of the beans, and some of that lovely butternut squash, right? So just do it to about a third of this pan. And what does it do? It gives you a creaminess, and it gives you a real smash of deliciousness and sort of unctuous flavor. So once we've finished doing that, we fold it through with all the chunks again. So that, I believe, is how you get really incredible texture and oh it smells amazing it smells amazing this is when we have a little try oh that was so good a little extra virgin olive oil not as an oil but as a kind of ingredient right and you get that lovely grassy fresh flavor and it gives it the most wonderful sheen and uh, on the floor is my little dog conker he's got very wet he's chilling out but he's very excited about this sausage Chili con carne, a little bit of balsamic. I know we put some in already, but that's cooked away. But just a little thimble of vinegar, any vinegar can often lift a ragu. That's beautiful. I'm gonna pop that back in the oven just for a little bit while I do the rice. We're gonna go in with some rice. That same mug, like a typical kind of cup of tea mug, I'm gonna fill this up twice. If you wanted to add some nice flavor, you know, you could take a little mixture of herbs, right? And just put that in there as well and get a lovely, lovely sort of fragrance and flavor to it. So this goes in and we'll boil that for 12 minutes. By that time, everything's gonna be perfect. Let's get some nice serving bowls. What should I do it in? Let's do it in that one. Looks really lovely. Let's have a little look at this rice. It's had about 12 minutes. Um, it goes from boiling and then that noise stops. And that's when you normally know it's just lightly frying. So that's a good sign. So then we can take out the herb. That's the brilliant thing about herb, man. They've done their job. And just use a fork or a spoon or something just to fluff it up. Can you see how light and fluffy that is? Every time, a winner. So I like that method. Smells amazing. Let's just portion up a little bit. I love rice. You can see the little flecks of herb in there. Let's get our lovely chili out. Look at these beautiful chunks. So, chili con carne, but not as you know it. And then for me, just a lovely little bit of yogurt in there. Some pepper and just a little olive oil. You can finish that with a little soft herb like coriander if you want. For me, that is beautiful comfort food for this time of year when the weather's closing in. It, you get epic flavor in there and texture. Mmm. Mmm. It's delicious. Sausage chili con carne. Super simple. Like, get it all going. You can double the recipe, you can triple it. It's not like spicy chili spicy. Like, my little seven-year-old would have no trouble with that at all. It's very mild. It's very layered. There's lots of nice little surprises. 
but perfect for this time of year when things get a little bit miserable. But this is delicious. <laughs>